Hey guys, how's it going? This is Michael Yednick here. I'm going to provide a little commentary until my buddies uh, Danny Baruti and Tony Robles come in. Looks like Gorst has the first real opportunity. He's going to probably start with the three ball or the one ball and get back to the middle of the table as quickly as possible, just the four, nine, and six. He might get rid of the two here as well. I would go three rails around that strike ball. If he hits it, he can get in trouble. He hit it. And a uh, little hesitation. I'll have to probably use a bridge, play the one. And that's the 13 goes. OK, he got a good roll. 13 goes. Probably play for the 12 immediately, go into the nine, open up the six and the four. Yeah, now everything's wide open. And he's off to the races here. It's a nice little position shot there. You can get rid of the one. Maybe play the four on the side and then the nine. Probably go six, 15, 14, then use the 10 ball or the seven balls as break shot. Okay, bump the nine instead. I still suspect he's going to get rid of this uh, four ball and six ball. We're going to have uh, the amazing Tony Robles join us. How's it going, Michael? Great, great. Uh, they just started, Tony. Um, this is the first rack. And uh, of course, got the first real good opportunity. So what happened after the break? Did a better break and leave him a shot or something? I walked in a few minutes after I heard it was starting, and I was like, oh, man, I got to go check this out. So OK, great. Ran over. Well, you know, interestingly enough, uh, yesterday, um, Josh had to play at 10 in the morning, and we were looking at the scores for all the matches for the final 16. We came a little short there. And um, everyone was missing. It was all the matches were close. Yeah. They, he, him, he played Alex Kozakis, and they both missed four or five balls each. And you could tell, and then um, Jerry McWhorter made a good point. He said, Tony, it's 10 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, he got <laughs> so some yeah, I said, the only one that went to Dunkin' Donuts that I saw coming out of Dunkin' Donuts was Fortunsky. And right, Fortunsky right. ran 150 <laughs> <laughs> in his morning match. So le lesson there, drink Dunkin'. <laughs> drink, drink some coffee, get some caffeine. Yeah. Now, this is a good break shot, but he's pretty far away now. Uh, our buddy Steve Lipsky never misses this shot, but uh, I've missed this before. Let's hope uh, Federer can put this yeah. down. Well, I mean, you mean uh, Joshua, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, um, yeah, oh, Li Lipsky. Yeah. Lipsky is a is a beast. <laughs> yeah. You know, he makes these look like a hanger. Steve Lipsky does. I kept saying, Gorse guys, I'm really sorry. I do know the difference between the two, but this is definitely filler at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you didn't have your caffeine. <laughs> yeah, pr pretty much. All right, great yeah. shot. So, what's the race to in the final? I'm not sure. Uh, that's a very good question. I'm, I'm assuming it's 150. I got a little confirmation here from uh, the powers that be. He's going right into the six here, and then I'll address the three. So now he's going to move the 13 out of there. Right. And then I'll use the 13 to get on the six and 10 later. Mm -hmm. So I'll get rid of the two, three, and the eight probably. Mm-hmm. We attack the eight right away because the eight or the three right away because that's the only one that blocked those balls. Yeah, what I liked about that shot is that it was very easy to get on the eight from where he was at, as opposed to shooting the two and then hoping to get perfect on the three. You know? Right, right, right. <coughs> hey, for whatever reason, he's not shooting it now. I wonder why. You know, I would think that maybe he wanted the option to make the ten there too, if he liked the six better as a break shot. You know how sometimes some people prefer a little lower and higher. You know? Yeah, what's your preference on that, Tony? Like I like to it higher. I like, like it higher, higher. Or, or anywhere in between, you know, the, the second and the third ball. Right, so you don't like the <clears> low break shots? Yeah, because you, when you hit that corner ball, it's tougher to spread the balls open effectively, you know? Right, right. Yeah, then so you have to go to, to the break two or three times throughout the run, throughout the rack, you know? 
Yeah, I saw you coaching some of my enemies. I'm um, sorry, frenemies. Uh, on how to how to hit that shot. <laughs> yeah, when well, it I mean, does come up, you know. Yeah, I mean, I try to help people when they ask. You know. He's gonna push the four out here, I think, and play position on the eight. Oh, he didn't have that angle, so he'll just play position on the four. I'm so wondering if he's gonna use a twelve as a key ball. I think he has to now, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, I would shoot the 8, the 4, the 11, or, or even just shoot the 11 now. But why wouldn't you get the rid of the 4? Yeah, you got to get rid of the 4 no matter what. If you don't shoot the 8, you got to shoot the 4, right? Yeah, I think he was just concerned about getting the right <laughs> shape on the 8 to get back to the 12. You know, this could be a little squirrely. But you see right there, if he would have shot the 4 and then the 8, and then he would have had 11. a perfect angle yeah, on the 11 to just go one rail to the 12, right? That's what I was thinking. But, you know, the thing is that not only is I consider him the greatest shot maker in the planet, but, you know, his cue ball is pretty, pretty darn good, too. Yeah, crazy know? good. So it's like, you know, uh, the, we, we were having this discussion a couple of days ago where, you know, I, I used to be a firm believer that if you don't have enough knowledge of straight pool, there's no way you can win tournaments. And it's like, couldn't be further. They, they, I disagree with that now, even though that's what I used to believe. Because, you know, these kids nowadays are so good that all they got to do is just get on the break shot in the end. Right, right. <laughs> you know, they can, it kind of like Efren. I played Efren in an exhibition match years ago at Amsterdam Billiards. And uh, he ran 126 playing backwards. Yeah, everyone just, uh, I, I mean, everyone in this tournament is just so capable of making any shot mm -hmm. that suddenly it's more advantageous to take a break shot like he just did. Leave your cue ball a little funny, come with the shot, and then have an easier run in, in the long run. You come with one tough shot, and then the mm -hmm. rest of the rack is uh, easier, you know, as opposed to playing perfect position, go, going into the sack like two or three times, you know. Correct. I think that's just uh, the way the game has evolved with the quality equipment and the uh, pocketing of these uh, the players of today. It's nice doing some commentary here with you, bud, because it's been a while. The last time I did it was when we were in New York when I was living there. Yeah, I miss, miss yeah. having you in New York, Tony. Yeah, I miss being in New York, believe me. I actually told Gail I considered joining the straight pool league at Amsterdam and flying in like every one or two months and playing like seven or eight matches, <laughs> you know, stay there for a week, you know. If you did that, um, I would love to have you stay at my apartment, yeah. which has a pool table. And, uh, nice. I'll, I'll, I'll rejoin the league. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> so over here, he got a, a, a little funny here. I think he has no choice but to shoot the seven ball. But I think he needs to get rid of that 15 ball soon. I, I Does the six go? Is that why he's thinking of taking the 14? Or maybe the, the seven? Well, I mean, it's a little steep, but, you know, I mean. No, I like the 17. I, I would never shoot the 14. It doesn't lead to anything. That's what I'm saying. The four, it makes no sense. You know, even if the six went, you're not really, you can't really move the cue ball much from that, that, right, right. that spot. I mean, I'd rather go two rails out of the corner with the seven. But, you know, low outside. He just probably doesn't feel comfortable for whatever reason with inside spin on the seven, you know, because or, or he's not comfortable that he might end up with a shot. Outside English on the seven still gets you yeah. in better position. You know, he no, I meant going into the one and the eight, which he doesn't have to do now. Um, but, you know, maybe he was thinking about that and he said, oh, you know, it's probably I don't have a guy goal, so, you yeah, know, yeah, I'm not yeah. going to. Or an all-state or a progressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm so surprised by that shot. But he's going to play the 14, then the 2, and then the 15, and maybe going with him off the 7. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he needs to get rid of that 15 soon because that 15 is impeding that, that uh, the 2 ball. And that's what he's probably going to do now. He has to be careful because if he comes off – the eight ball and then the two and the and, and the thirteen, the cue ball could escape. So you have to be careful with it. Right? There you go. It, it went there a bit, right? Yeah, hit yeah, the yeah. eight, the twelve, yeah, yeah. the thirteen, but it didn't hit it thin enough to escape, right? Yeah, I like the way he played that. <clears throat> so what would you do here for a key ball? I like maybe leaving the uh six to the two. Mm -hmm. Or playing the seven balls, my break shot. Yeah. 
using the one ball. Maybe uh, I know that's on the wrong side of what we'd prefer. He's going to make things a lot better. Yeah, he just. So that just made the four balls break shot, right? Yeah, I think it's a little bit on the low side. He kind of made like a little smirk. So I don't think he's 100% happy with it. But, uh, you know, I do like the, f the position he put it in for possibly using it as a key ball. Because if he shot the six in the side and then the two ball and then use the five to go for the 12 and then come down for the seven one and then use the six. I mean, the thir what is that? The 13? Yeah, the 13 is a key ball for the four. That's a possible pattern right there. Right, right, right. You know, with minimal cue ball movement, you're not going up or down or anything like that. But, you know, that's just one. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk patterns here since we got a little time. I like the 6, 2, 5, 1, 7, 12, 13 is a key ball for the 4 ball if you were to use the 4 That's ball. a great pattern too, absolutely. And that's what's so beautiful about this game because, you know, some players, but look, he's doing the complete opposite. He's going to shoot the 4 so instead. He, he's planning on <clears throat> developing the 5 and just didn't get there. That was a good good possibility, but... It wasn't bad because, you know, he, he couldn't get stuck. He had two Geikos there with the 13 and the 6, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the seven is it seems like the best candidate right now. And playing the one to get to the seven, you think? I think he should gonna is he gonna shoot the one now? I mean it wouldn't make sense to shoot get rid of the five and the twelve and then have to come back to the side of the table for the for the one boy. He sees a one ball now, right? Yeah, yeah. He's doing <coughs> something a little different. <coughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't use the six as his cue ball to, to get on this two. I know it's a little uh, rough, but I would play the six and the two in the same pocket and use the corner instead of the side for the six. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what he wants to do. He wants to leave the six for the side, but I love shooting the the two ball in the low right-hand corner pocket for that because then all I have to do is shoot a stop shot on the six as opposed to get trying to get straight on the two. Now, the good thing about shooting the two ball in the upper right-hand corner pocket is that you do have an option where if you get straight, you stun follow forward, or if you yeah, have an angle. Break shot in the sixth yeah. too. You got mm -hmm. a couple other options. <coughs> All right, guys. Uh, my entertainment value is about to leave. You guys are going to be uh, graced with the <laughs> amazing uh, Danny Brody, uh, Billiard Hall of Famer. So I'm stepping out. I'll uh, talk to you guys soon. Hope you guys have a good time. Thank you, Michael. So we have Mr. Danny Baruti here. Hey, the Tony. Mountain. How's it going, bud? All right. I'm so thrilled to have you here. Well, good to be here, Tony. Tony and I go back about 40 years in New York. Look Tony at that shot. Tony started playing when he was a kid. That was great. I want to raise the issue of how these guys are all hitting the ball. They're all hitting very softly. They're, they're actually... They're actually kind of teaching a whole generation of players not to hit the ball hard, except for the break shot. Uh oh, uh oh, uh -oh. he's not gonna like this. Wow. But see, there, I think the only chance he had to avoid that scratch is to hit it hard because the keyboard would have bent yeah. a little bit before it reached the pocket, you know? That's kind of still a bad roll. You don't expect to. <clears throat> to get that momentum towards the pocket like that. Yeah, not from that at angle. That at that speed, too. What do you like here? You like the nine? I love the nine. Um, but I think I would shoot the seven first to stop the cue ball there. What about you? Yeah, I gotta agree with you. You know, the thing about the nine is uh, if you come off the rail and run into those balls and you hit the left side of the two and the 15. Bad things can happen. Bad things can happen. You, yeah. you want to hit the other side if possible to at least have the three worst case scenario, right? Yeah. 14 might be dead also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't look at it, to be honest with you. Yeah. I guess he did.
Well, anyway, I, I was expecting to jump in at 6 o'clock, and lo and behold. Same same thing with me. That's why I wasn't here for the beginning, of because they told me the match was at 6, and then oh. they started it at 5.40 or something like that. So better for me. I didn't eat my french fries. <laughs> I took care of him while you weren't looking. There you go. That's Thank why you. I came late. <laughs> so let's see where the cue ball hits over here in the rack. You want to hit that too full, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, there yep. it goes. And you know, like if you end up with a shot, okay, you got to consider yourself fortunate, right? Yeah. But it's it's not it's not ideal. That's right. It's not ideal. And is that fourteen? You'll be looking at it now. Yeah, because they're frozen, right? They're frozen. Uh, there might There's be a, good a gap chance. between there a little bit. If it's anything, it's throwing the right way. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like if he decides to take the five, because I think if the fourteen doesn't go, I think the five is the only shot he has. He has to determine how much of the 15 he's going to hit in order to figure out what speed to hit it with. You know, if he's hitting it on the thick side, I, I like to favor hitting with a little bit of inside to come back out that way and not, you know, you don't want to go underneath the 12 and freeze to it if you hit it too soft either, right? Yeah. You know, sometimes you shoot the shot and you hit it full and it slows down the cue and it ends up trickling behind the ball, right? Okay, yeah, so he had the top side complete, so he was never in, in, in any danger. Yeah, he made sure he killed the cue ball with the 15. But my guess is that the 14 doesn't go. Yeah, I think he would have shot it already. Yeah. See, this is what I was talking to, to, to uh, Dawn about earlier, Dan. Yeah. And, and, and you know this. Over here, I, if I shot the 15 and played position for the 10 and went to the 14, if I hit the left side of the 14, the cue was going to come off the 14 to 2 and go towards the 6 mm -hmm. and the 10, and then I play position for the 8 ball. Yeah, you get a lot of action. And you might set up the 6 for the break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good play. But we're about to find out what he's thinking. Because I, I, I would be surprised if he's thinking of hitting one rail and coming and hitting them. I guess that's what he thought of. Same exact thing, right? Yep. <clears throat> Great minds think alike, Tony. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> well, you know, if you hit that 14 thin enough and run into the two, um, that 14 might go out on the other side, too, for That's a possible break shot. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is that you got to hope that you hit that. Exactly right. Exactly, because you yeah. don't want the cue ball to trickle past a one, and now you have yeah. to shoot him. I mean, he's not going to end up with a cut. Either way, he's going to end up with a shot in the side yeah, pocket. It's going to be a very playable position. Yeah, I think that's what he's looking at. So that was a very fast 42. He ran him in less than, probably ran him in like, I don't know, 15 minutes, 12 minutes, it, even yeah, 42. Yeah, must have been fast. I'm wondering what he's thinking here. Yep, he's going to take the 10. Interesting. Now, let's see what side of the 14 he hits. Oh, he missed it. He missed it. I did not expect that at all. It looks like he overhit it, too. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't have to hit it that hard. Yeah. So he made four. And Josh is back up. You know, most of the, these guys don't miss too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, not just these two guys, but the rest of the top competitors. They tend to hit the ball softly, and a lot of their misses come from hitting the balls too hard. Mm -hmm. It looks like he, that, that was, well, I guess he mishit that. He mis he mishit it in general. But it was a little, he had a little speed on that, too. Yeah. wonder if he did that to get that two ball out of there for a break shot. Probably. He is left-handed, though. You would want it on that side anyway, right? Oh, he missed it. That's why he, he's disgusted with himself. Interesting. He has to get rid of that 10 ball anyway. You know, the 6 goes to, does the 2 go past the 8? Does it go in that pocket, rather? 
Yeah, you see what you're saying with to, to use a six to get there, right? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And he has to clear the 10 out anyway, so this could be a happy accident that he has to play that 10. Maybe he might even try to take out the two. I think that's what he tried to do. He tried to take out the, you know, shoot the one to the two. Yeah. But I don't think the two goes here. I, I think if it went there, he wouldn't be making, look disappointed is what I meant. I, I can't tell if the 14 is too low to use as a break shot. Or if you could shoot the four on the side. Mm -hmm. And use the four maybe up the corner for the key ball. For the 12. So you're talking about eventually using the 14 to get to the 4 and then the 12? Yeah. Or even the 8, right? The 8 would be a good candidate to get you. Yeah. So then Probably all you have to do is uh, figure out how to get rid of that uh, that 2 ball from there. And over here, I would not nice. go into these with a lot of speed at all. Nope. And it looks like he's going in. Nice That's shot. That's it. So if he has to, this is a point in the rack where it's important for you to make a decision as to what's going to be a break shot, right, Dan? I, I agree. You have to be precise here. There's no generalities. So you think he's going to try to make the 14 a better break shot two by rails? going two rails? Yeah. Yeah, but he overhit it. Overhit it. it. He overhit it, yeah. He might not, now he might need to... Use a 14 in the side, possibly, or just a 12. All right, when you shoot the 14 in the side and then the one for the four? or 100%. But this is what I was telling Michael earlier, that their cue ball control is so impeccable that they can they can end up out of line, and as long as they get on the break shot in the end, that's all that matters. They have a that's break right. shot. Yeah. Well, you know, I used to be that, that guy that would say all the time that, no, they, there's no way they can win tournaments playing like that. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, you, you don't exactly have to know. It's just a little tougher for them. Well, they have to work harder for it, but they still get it done. Here we go. I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. I think he was trying to take it out and hit it dead square and shoot the four on the side. I thought he was trying to come back for the four and use the 14 yeah. in the side for the break, like you suggested before. Wow. Well, this is workable. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't hit it too hard, though, because if you do, you're going to miss a rack. This is one of those where you want to soft follow it, right? Hit the top hope of the you line. Get, hope you get a few to come out. Oh, I have to remember to talk a little lower. I don't want to distract the players. Yeah. Oh, wow, look. He jarred it. He jarred it in the pocket. That's another problem with the break shot close to the rail. Mm -hmm. so you got to hit it harder. And you More accurate, right? Yeah, and it's... You're going to jam when you hit it harder. Well, this is a classic Danny Booty here. Huh. You shoot the four, the three, and then have the nine as a Geico or the possibly the ten. You find it hard to get position on a ball like the three. No, not here. N not for this shot. And to hold it for the right angle. I have no idea what he was trying to do there unless he was trying to break it out with the ten and then have the two and the fifteen as a... I think he tried to improve the angle on the three. Oh, yeah. He didn't want a big angle on it. I see. What, do you think he has an angle to run into the rack here? or? I think he's going to draw into it. Mm -hmm. And have the two of the 15, right? Or, yeah. yeah. Now, this is a tricky one here because if you're trying to play position on the nine ball but you don't want to end up with too much of an angle to end up using the three ball afterwards you got to be careful with the speed you don't want to end up going you know have the three in front of you to the point where you can't pocket the nine ball right yeah what's he going to come down Could come off the rail and play the nine is that what you're suggesting I'm, I, I'm assuming that's what he's doing you know because I don't think he wants to play position on the seven he has to hit that absolutely perfect in the seven, the seven it is, yeah, there's nothing it's too there. low yes yeah. yeah, too low corner of the rack has disappeared mm -hmm. and, uh, 
I, I would try to play position for the nine here. Even if it means shooting it in the same pocket. Because then, then that way you can even just shoot the three and leave the nine as an insurance, Come around right? for the three right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that way you, you still leave the, the nine ball there Yeah, as as the insurance ball. But he overhit it for sure. Mm -hmm. You get rid of the seven, you got the one as a break, too. It never bothered me shooting a ball up the table if you're really close with the object ball. No, cue ball and object ball are close to each other. Yeah, you. I think you've always been one of the best I've ever seen. That's my worst shot. Shoot. I, I overcut it every single time. Huh. I try and make adjustments. I, I just overcut every time. Huh. World famous <laughs> for hanging the ball. So what do you do here, Dan? Uh, you got to play off the three and then the nine. Or maybe the three to set, clear out the seven. Try to break with the one. I don't I don't see anything else. The only other thing that I can see that I know, you know, some people might think it's crazy, is shoot the three, come off the bottom rail, then shoot the nine in the right-hand corner and go three rails into the rack. <laughs> yeah. But that's for local people like me. I'm local. <laughs> <laughs> Poco loco. Yeah. But he has an opportunity here. You shoot the seven. Yeah. Well, oh no, he can shoot. He can shoot the seven. Yeah, it's not a bad shot because he has a little insurance there. Yeah. Um, but he has to feel comfortable with it, obviously. But if yeah, he this is yeah, that's not a gimme. Yeah. yeah. But if he shoots that nine ball, he needs to be careful not to hit the right side of the eight because if it goes off the eight and the thirteen, you could possibly go in the side pocket, right? So he hit it good. But you yeah. know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. You don't want to go near that side pocket on the yeah. shot. I'm assuming the 14 goes. Yeah. <clears throat> 15 might go, too. I kind of like playing the 15 if you got it. Absolutely. You free up that 6 and the 8. To get, you, you know, you might be able to set the 6 up for a break. <clears throat> Wondering if the only real shot he has is a 7. I think if he had the 14, he would have jumped on it by now, right? Yeah. Yeah, he might have to kill the cue, either kill the cue boy here or go around three rails with low left. If if that's really what he has, you know. Yeah, it's hard to tell on on TV if he can make the ten ball. You know, for me the choice is easy. You either you either hit it hit it um um thin. Okay, so we're just reading some comments. Rick, you're wrong. These guys are fine players. Wow, he k killed the cue ball beautifully in that shot. Great shot. Well, it's not just that. I mean, listen, not, it's not to discredit the players of the past, but, you know, these kids are young. Yeah. They're, they're, I don't even think they're 25. Yeah. You know, so they're just learning the game. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because believe me, as great as they were back then, they wouldn't like it playing these kids 9-ball, 10-ball. I guarantee you that. Yeah. I mean, the number of 100-ball <clears throat> runs, 150-ball runs speaks for itself. And the fact that they're even comparing them to great players of the past means they must be pretty good. So do you run into the 12 ball? No, I don't even think he has an angle to run to the 12 ball. And go to the rail and come up the other way. Well, so he did run into the 12 ball. Yeah. Okay. I, don't think I, knew he, I, I knew he'd had something, but I didn't think it was that would be that severe. Yeah. I think he was trying to hopefully hit it a little thinner to come down a yeah. little more, but I don't know. I thought that was kind of forcing <clears throat> it. <clears throat> but what do you do from here? Oh, it looks like he's got to play the 8. So he might have to kill it again. Yeah. Then if he plays the 8, he can use the... Uh, 12 to get on the 6. Or the 14, right? Yeah. It looks like the 15-6 is a combo. Oh, that's even better because yeah. then now you can save the 2, right? Yeah. Now you get rid of the 2 out of the way, right? Yeah. 
decision time. Yeah. I like the way he kills the ball. Eh? It yeah, makes it look like a hanger. Really good. It's funny, someone that doesn't know pool, he says, kill the ball. He's not hitting it hard, he's hitting it soft. <laughs> Very nice. Yep. yep. So I'm assuming he's using the 13, Danny. Let's see where these uh, wind up after he plays the combo, if he plays the combo. Yeah, it's just I'm curious to see if he has enough angle there to send the 15 off the 6 towards the 13 and maybe create another, create, yeah. you know, possible key ball, yeah. break ball, you know? Yeah. I might have considered, to be honest with you, maybe ending up with a little more angle than that. So that way I shoot the 14, run into the 15, and send it past the 13. So that way I can use it as a key ball on the side, you know? Because you're not going to get stuck on the two ball if you do it that way, you know? Yeah. And then use a two to get to the six, right? Always going to use the six to set up the 15. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what, what he's planning here. Well, he's going he to get a shot at the 6 and bump to 15. Can he do that from this angle? Because now he has to make sure he gets it out of the way of the 2. Yeah. He doesn't want to He doesn't want to miss the 2, right? Yeah. So, he, so I guess he is going to use the 2, the 15, and then the 13. Yeah. Not ideal, but like I said, oh, the, the cue ball control is so good that it's yeah. like as long as they end up with a break shot in the end, but I would have I would have definitely considered moving the 15 as a key ball yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'm not too keen about this. It's easy to come up short or get blocked out by the 13. Oh, go around it that way. Oh, interesting. Oh, how do you think he was going to do it? I thought he was going to try and roll up sl slow, maybe. You know, I didn't, oh, I didn't yeah, see no, 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 no. I, I definitely uh, I thought he was going to go two rails. I, I would, yeah, that, that's risky trying to slow roll yeah. it there, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see your point. With, well, with this the could roll. overrun the position, leaving him a tough shot, too. I'm pretty sure he's so focused now after missing that last shot that he's going to really yeah. go into super focus. That's pretty mode. nice. Yeah. I hope he runs some balls because I got to get up at three in the morning to <laughs> catch a plane. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel this tournament, then? Eh, not too bad, you know. I'm getting my pool legs back. Yeah. How do you like to hit this shot, Dan? Uh, try and stun the top of the balls. I don't like too much movement off of it. Just a little English and. And just come across the balls, hit yeah. the rail, and come to the center of the table? Yeah, just get a little separation from the cue ball and the rack. Yeah. So I don't want to turn it loose. You ever shot this ball where you had such a thick hit on the head ball and that next to it that the cue ball would come up and then curve around the rack and scratch in the opposite corner pocket? So <laughs> infuriating. <laughs> you know? So annoying. <laughs> yeah. So if he hits it with follow, then the cue ball is just going to try to go towards the side pocket and probably bend before, right? Oh, he missed. I, I'm he hit it hard. No need to hit it that yeah. hard. I'm telling you, uh, I, most of the misses I've seen in this tournament have come from guys over hitting the ball. Yeah. All right, so uh, this is an easy decision here to 15. Sorry, I was trying to hear what they were saying. What did you say? They were correcting the score. Gotcha. So Josh is m probably more than thrilled to be back at the table right now because he definitely yeah. didn't expect to be here. I like getting rid of that eight first mm -hmm. since it's blocking the pocket. He's probably going to get rid of that six yeah. or the ball in the corner pocket, but. 
But like you said, he needs to get rid of that aid as soon as possible. What? He almost missed that. I am aware of it. I don't like to sleep. Now here's where the eight blocking the pocket comes into play. Mm -hmm. Now he's got to do so. He can't just shoot the 11. He has to shoot it and do something. And he obviously wants to save the six and the nine for last, so he needs to get rid of the problems ASAP. Or as soon as possible. <laughs> I think the seven goes. Goes in the opposite pocket, right? Yeah, that's a good <clears> play. <throat> Maybe use a 12 to nudge him a bit? I don't know. I'm talking about not now, after the seven. Yeah, that's a good play. Good night, the eight becomes an insurance ball. Okay, so he chose to do it that way. I guess he wanted more of an angle on the one ball. I have to assume he wanted more angle on the one ball to run into them that way, which I kind of like better, to be honest with you, because sends the balls that way. Yeah, doesn't have to worry about sending him towards the balls that are already down yeah, there. Yeah, you know? absolutely. <clears throat> I, well, I didn't like that, the I know. Speed. You, you, I, this, I was making this point to uh, Dawn in the previous match in the women's final, that when, you, when it comes to a small little cluster, even if it's two, three, four balls, it's not necessary to run into them hard because you're not yeah. trying to break an entire rack. It's just yeah. a couple of balls, right? I think sometimes people take it literally. Mm -hmm. Break the balls. They literally try to break the balls. Yeah. They're trying to split them in half. Just got to <laughs> move them. Do you think he's going to use the two... The 14, 14 and the 6. And the 6? Yeah. See, that's what I mean by the control. If you're not, like, spot on, yeah. it's so easy to get out of line in that shot, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, one of them is going to have to go into super-duper focus mode now because so far they've each missed shots that were totally unexpected. Yeah. <coughs> I thought there were a few risky decisions in there, but... Uh, but he really got through with no problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, uh, if Federer gets an op another opportunity, he's going to have to really uh, wake up a bit, you know? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he's going to hit this one with speed. But you have to hit it low here. You don't want to risk. Yeah, <laughs> what you said, hit it. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be bending over backwards looking for dead shots right now. <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't shoot like him. Yeah. No, I could mean yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What mm -hmm. do you mean yeah? <laughs> I consider him the best pure shot maker in the game today. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. He's got to do something. He decided to shoot the twelve instead. These are just two shots that lead to no good. How do you hit it? Hard? I rest my case. <laughs> it's, 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 these shots, I mean, even if you hit it soft, that's a tough shot. <laughs> that's, that's true. But yeah. I, I yeah, but you got no forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Not if you hit it hard. You have to hit it dead straight. And that's the nature of the game, you know. Sometimes you think it's going to be a, a, a fast match, and then all of a sudden, yeah. you, I'm you missing a plane. Game. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you do here? How would you attack this? As far as um, I don't trying know. to break that cluster. I'm looking at the. Th is that the thirteen near the four ball? It is. That is a thirteen. Yeah, might be able to clear that out, or play off the four and break with the fifteen. He's going to play it and swing around for the mm -hmm. 14. Yeah. Wow. 
I guess he decided to break him with a seven. I don't. I don't like that. I yeah, like pushing him the other way. Yeah, I like to push the balls towards the area of the table where there's no rail. There's there's no balls in the way, and you know you don't have to w break a cluster to create more. Yeah. I mean, there's only one ball there, but you know you already have two loose balls in the floor. I think the four might go there. Might go past mm -hmm. the uh, 13. He could certainly maneuver around it anyway. So he can shoot the eight or the 14 to get to that four. So it's part of the problem. <coughs> Maybe even hit the one to the uh, five and create a little break shot there on that side, right? Certainly could. We got to deal with the 310 also. Mm hmm. Let's see what he decides. Is he going to play the 13 next or the 4? He's dropping down. So he's dropping down. So he probably wants to play the 4 on the opposite side. Maybe use the 1 to, to get rid of the 13. I mean the 3 and the 10 and then play, use the 4 as an insurance ball, right? Yeah. That's a re perfectly reasonable. Nope. I mean, I, I'm assuming, no, he has an angle. Oh, he definitely has an angle. So again, I think he's looking for the Forza as the insurance here. Ten's a break. Mm-hmm. Three's the key, or the 11. What do you think? Absolutely, you know, I'm 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 of that uh, style of play where I I always try to look for as many stop shots as possible. I'm always trying to look for as many stop shots as possible, and I guess he he likes that side because he's right-handed. Yeah. I <coughs> See, I think it's a little trickier to play position on the 12 as a key ball as opposed to the 3 because, you yeah. you know, I think you have 100%, the 15, yeah. you have the 11, you have the 6, you have the 5 as a break shot, possibly. This is a dicey shot, hard to control. So how would you finish off this one? Was if it were you, I mean, if it were you. Um, so I guess you gotta start with the twelve. Mm -hmm. And then depending where you come off, like I say I can't tell if the five goes in the low left pocket. So he's playing for the six. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not. That's I not ideal. Yeah. Neither one, neither one is neat now at this point. I mean, if the eleven goes, and that'd be great. But I guess he doesn't like it, so he's probably going to use a three, six, ten, eleven, to get to the five. Is he just fixated on playing the five? That he's. I mean, I think the ten is a better break shot. Yeah, it is. Maybe he'll just trickle it down then, right? Nope. So he is going to take the five. Yeah. So he got a little out of line there, but I think he'll be fine if he yeah. just rolls it in. I mean, he's really good at killing the ball, so... Sure that you hit it with enough speed if you know he's oh. not. 
Oh, so he had a much further yeah. hit than what we thought, right? It's yeah. like you said, it's sometimes tough to see the exact angle they very, have, you know, from the same. Well, I don't know if the uh, if the break shot he chose was objectively worse than the other one, but he he made a plan. And he stuck with it. Mm-hmm. He's looking to see if he's going in between them or if he's going to hit it head on. Now how do you hit this one? If I'm going to go between them, but I'm going to hit the 10 first, I hit it with stun draw. So the cube will draw away from the scratch, but I hit it with a lot of right. So it'll hit the long rail, the short rail, and go back into the rack. Yeah. You know, I love that shot. But if I see I'm going to hit the top of the ball, I'm going to hit it with draw. So it'll hit the off the 8, off the 10, and go straight up. Mm -hmm. So it all depends. And if I'm going to hit it dead straight, I just hit it like, you know, with a little bit of draw, so that way enough, you know, enough draw to, to draw it away from the ball that I run into, you know, kind of like a stun. Those are, he's loading up. There you go. That's the one I'm talking about, right? Um, I think the, 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 the guy you want to ask this question to is Steve Lipsky. <laughs> Who's he? <laughs> he hits us th any break shot like a dream. Yes, or, or toasty. Steve does something very I find uh, that I just can't warm up to. He'll leave the cue ball in the rack if he has to. And he has no qualms about shooting a break shot from behind the line. It's a hanger for him. Yeah. It really is. It's unbelievable. Those of you that, are, that don't know, Steve Lipsky is a player in New York. He's a terrific player, great shot maker. <laughs> Not just a great shot maker. They call no. him. They call. They call him patterns, and there's a reason they call him patterns. Because he likes to wear uh, jeans and shirts with patterns. Patterns, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, his straight pool patterns are ridiculous. Yeah, he's a fine player. He's one of the strongest players in New York the last 20 years. Easily. As are you. And I've had a lot of good players in New York the last a 20 lot. years. A lot. Over here, I would I, I would break the four. I'm, I'm talking about after the one. Yeah, yeah. You know, use the one to get to the four. And use, then, like, you know. the three, six, nine to get on mm -hmm. the four. Or there's that. Well, I didn't think he had an angle. Yeah, you know, know. If you have an angle, you have to do that, you know. Yeah. He set up the uh, 12 ball. Uh, the, what is that, the 11? Or the 15? He played a 14 and bumped that ball. Mm -hmm. And he got the 4 for insurance. Well, I think that's his only shot anyway. He's got to play off the 14. Six is yeah, I, th I think the 14 is definitely the shot and uh, try to clear up that. You need to clear up that. Uh, I, would, I would use a 4 to co come into the 12 or in the 13 and then use the 11 well, as, I don't a, as go an into insurance. That. I use the 4 to go around on the right side and shoot them in the other pocket. So so uh, then I guess a 12 does go where yeah. he's shooting the 14. I'm, okay, thinking, yeah. I'm thinking it does. Yeah, if it doesn't, that's definitely the shot. No, no. need to break it up. No. But do you like you like setting up the? Uh, well, if that's the case, I'd rather shoot the four, the ten, the eight, and then get on the twelve, right? Yeah. That would be better if if if, if that was it. See, he probably did this, and I was actually going to suggest that, but I wasn't hundred percent sure about twelve, thirteen because I like the three and the six to the eleven, or the three, six, nine, eleven, you know? Yeah. Not I mean not not that he got it, but. Um, you know, I think the other one was, like I said, the 14, the 10, the 8, and run into the 12. But I'm looking at it from here, and, and from here, it doesn't look like the 12 goes hmm. into that pocket. Does the 13 go? Uh, maybe in the upper corner? No, uh, no, no. the low left. Oh, no, no, the 13 definitely doesn't go. Which is why I think he tried to run into it, right? I think he has to play the eight now.
clean and two for the 12. I think it does go. Yeah. Yeah, if it goes, that's definitely the shot. If it doesn't, then he's going to have to try to see if he can, has enough room. Or well, it doesn't, I guess, because wow. he's shooting the 10 ball. Now, I've seen you do something very interesting. Very, very often, you'll play and you'll leave a key ball that's up the table. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that it's a very practical way of playing. And not too many guys do that. But I've watched you do it, and it seems really practical. Yeah, I think what happens, so th there's your shot, Danny, the one yeah. that you said with the 12. Good call there. Um, it's just that um, I told you, I'm always looking. Everyone has a different style of playing. I'm always looking for the one that's going to minimize the movement of the cue ball whenever I can, obviously. But I've shot that pattern so many times with leaving the ball up there that I feel comfortable getting on the back shot from there, you know? I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> so would you get rid of the nine before you attack the six and the three? No. Or no, would you get use a nine to get position on the 11? Well, you got to get rid of the 15. Yeah, no, I mean after, assuming those, are, those two are gone. Uh... I don't. I don't see how he can uh, can do that. I think maybe he's got to play for the thirteen now. Yeah, no. What I mean, the the end pattern to get to the uh, break shot. Oh. Will you use a three six nine, or will you get rid of the nine and then use a three I don't and think a you six? Can. I don't think you can. I think you got to go three six nine. I think so too, because yeah. the nine is closer to the break shot too. Yeah. So and and you end up with an automatic angle. Worst case scenario, if you stop the cue ball, then you have an angle anyway, right? Yeah. That was a great shot. Mm -hmm. He has some of the best cue ball control withdrawal shots that I've ever seen yeah. in my life. You got to back this up about one or two balls. You don't want to be straight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Watch your control. Right? Now watch how he gets on this break shot. We gotta come to the middle of the table. Maybe he didn't leave enough angle. Yes, he did. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. The balls have been a little sluggish coming off the rail. Yeah. Now, other than that, I attribute that to the cloth being new. Mm-hmm. But other than that, would you say that these tables have been playing terrific? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's spot on. Yeah, I, I was like... This is the first time in my in my life that I've ever played on a diamond table mm -hmm. that almost almost felt like I was playing on a Brunswick. And you, I know you played on Brunswicks. And in I grew New up York, playing yeah. Brunswick. Yeah, yeah, that's all I, I. I it's my favorite table of all time, yeah. the Gold Crown. Yeah. <coughs> By the way, the place has been fixed up and looks beautiful down here. Get a oh chance yeah. to come down to uh, Q Masters. It's. They really redecorated the place. It's very nice. Yeah, it's really awesome. Back rail? Yep. No. Oh, no, that was the one we hit. But see, that's the thing. Like, it's it's hard to tell from here what part of the ball yeah. he's going to hit, yep. you know? So, you know, it's hard for me to make a call on that if I, I can't see whether or not he's going to hit the yeah. top rail. That's why, you know, it, it's, it's tough to set up multiple cameras, too. Yeah. That's why I told Ira Lee when uh, we're going to build an addition to our house in Florida so I can have my, my pool table again finally. Nice. And once I have that, I want to uh, have an overhead camera as well so you can see the angles correctly. But Ira Lee told me that it takes a special lens to be able to see the entire table. So, so he says it's a little tricky, but he, he knows of one. Huh. So you can't just put any camera there and expect it to show the entire table like flawlessly. Yeah. I wonder if the eight ball goes. Yeah, the eight could be dead too. In the mm -hmm. pocket, and the five can be dead. Yep. I'm gonna call you the pack man. You're always looking for dead shots in the pack. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. <laughs> but of course, he has to get rid of the two if the eight, in order to help the eight go in. Oh well. All right. Got pretty aggressive there. 
And those are the ones that you say they miss sometimes if they don't hit dead perfect, you know, when you have to hit a ball with that speed. Funny, you know, sometimes I'll leave a key ball and the cue ball will go into the cluster and continue to go in and bury itself, hiding the uh, the safety ball. Right. Like he could have froze up on that eight just as easily or something stupid mm -hmm. like that. Not that he's doing something stupid, just that the balls behave in a... Uh, well, I would imagine he wants to play position for the eight ball next, right? Yeah. I don't know that I want to keep breaking these. Yeah, I like the fact that the 12 ball might go past... The, fifth, the 13. Is that 13? Yeah, but the, in it the low right corner, you mean? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. You know, after he got rid of the 8, I mean, obviously, but... Like if he was playing the 8 from the 1, he could have maneuvered around mm -hmm. for sh open shots. I think yep. that's the correct play. Oh, yeah, I'm going to say it again. I said it with Dawn. I said it with, with all the other commentators. I said there's a difference between difference between us and other players out there. Is Some like to perform surgery like you and I, and others like to create a bloody mess. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Whoops. Wow. See, anything can happen when you go into the balls. Especially if you're not paying attention to how they react. Yeah. You know, where they where it's going once you b come off them, you know. Now, it looks like he's going to have to bump this 10-ball. <coughs> mm-hmm. Unless a 6 goes in the side, but I don't think yeah. it does. So the question is, if he does bump the 10-ball, is he going to hit the 5 directly or to the left or to the right? Yeah, you know. I didn't hit it at no, all. No, he had to go into the 10. Yeah. I know, but it looked like the angle looked like you were going to hit the bottom of the 10, so yeah. I couldn't tell, you know, but it was definitely fuller for sure. We played a 14, 12, 15 now, or 14, 10, 5. Yeah, 14, 10, 5, and then, uh, yeah, that's a tricky one. Oh, he's going to play the 12 and the 15, I guess. Yeah, because that way you get rid of the problems right away. But I, w I kind of like getting rid of that one ball sooner rather than later. You know, because you can always use the... Well, actually, no, because you can use a 3 for the 1, right? Yes, you can. So, you but use the one a 15. Guy, the 1 kind of th is the odd, odd fellow out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't conform to any pattern. Yeah, it's, that's it's what I call the dummy ball. I hate yeah. the dummy balls because they do absolutely nothing. Just they're, duh. <laughs> they're there to mess you up. Yeah. And you always wind up scratching your head saying, how did, yeah. I, how did I leave that there? <laughs> where did that, where'd that come from? I guess the one becomes the key ball here. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the good thing about it is that he was able to keep it simple. He didn't have to do anything fancy. So just a soft little roll, come off the rail a little bit. Mm. Didn't like that. Yeah, that's why I said soft little yeah. roll, soft little roll. Because if he doesn't like this, I mean, he, he has he has an angle. He can create one, but he's going to have to side, smash this. Side pocket, maybe? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you, if you hit it soft, you see, but look, yeah. if you hit it soft, you, you don't have a problem getting for the side pocket. But over here, you know, you hit it at that speed. You better make sure you hit it at the center of the pocket, you know. That was a nice <coughs> shot, by the way. Mm -hmm. That was really sweet, the way he just drifted into position yeah. there. I could ask our technician, uh, what's the number of the pool room here at Q Masters? I want to call the front desk and order coffee. <laughs> you really want me to look that up on my phone for you? Right I was now? kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, would you like me to get you some coffee, Danny? I don't, yeah. This is my actually this is my favorite <laughs> favorite all time break sure. shot, Danny. Black okay. tree sugars. Black tree sugars, yeah. Tony. Good, thank you. Okay, guys, I'll be right back with Danny's black and tree sugars. <laughs> you sound just like your father. This is. I hope so. 
this is my favorite bridge shot of all time here, Danny. I love this shot because when you hit this with pure follow, no spin, that cube always wants to hit that long rail and go to the opposite side pocket. But I hit it with so much uh, follow that it bends before it reaches the pocket and just goes across the table back and forth. And, and it, if it doesn't run into another ball, it just keeps going back and forth. But if it does, it stops it most of the time. That and he was hit, nice. And he hit a little softer, which is good, yeah. because that's what you've been suggesting they do. Because I think that's actually the better way to shoot it on the diamond table. Yeah. Whereas in the Brunswick, I'm not afraid to hit it hard. Over here, I think twice about hitting it with the speed that I mentioned earlier, right? Yeah. You took the worst beat on a break shot I think I've ever seen in New Jersey. In the Jersey State Championship, you were playing. I remember. No, Santos. De Santos Van Bajon, yeah. And you needed light. No, I needed three balls. Three balls. And you made the break shot. And I think two other balls went in. Yeah, that's and everybody exactly. Everybody was applauding. And the cue ball was bouncing around. And another ball came out of nowhere and knocked it in the side. No, the, the cue ball was c going straight up the middle of the table. Yeah. And another ball came up and cut it almost a 90 degree angle into the, in the side pocket. Oh, yeah. What a I never forgot that because. I, I went out and threw up in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> Good memories, huh? Oh, man. Good memories. It was brutal. Yeah, that, that, that was, uh, but I'm saying, I'm talking about the tournament yeah. that, that Bill Haley had there. Yeah. Which, yeah, it was a good good memories, man. Yeah. What a great event he, he ran there. Yeah. Jack and Alameda. Alameda and mm -hmm. Had a lot of good players could show up to that. Thorsten showed up, you yeah. know, and Bob Madoff and Lipsky. And yeah, it was good. a lot of good players. I remember at one point, Thorsten ran 150 and out, and then two games later, he ran 150 and out. And in between, Tommy Walters beat him. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Tommy's is a hell of a, he has one of the greatest killer instincts I've ever seen, too. I've yeah. never seen him not fool around. Ever. That's right, ever. In, in, a, in, in any match that he's ever shot, ever. Mm-hmm. So how do you attack this? Do you use a two ball to uh Yeah, I like to play to the fifteenth to roll down on the floor or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe get a break on them from behind. I the thirteen might pass go to the pocket, breaking up to twelve fourteen. That's perfect right there. Yeah. And I think the two goals too, worst case scenario will. But I think he's going to be able to see either the 2 or the 13. Yeah, I wish they had a triangle drawn on the table. Oh, they don't? I mean, one that we could see, not oh, one I that's see. only visible to owls and <laughs> eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Better make sure he doesn't skim off the top of the 12 and sneak up behind the 1. That was yeah, funny. good shot. They said that some of the better baseball players, the hitters, they can actually see the seams on the balls. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Yeah. If he had just enough of the nine ball to make it then, he could have drawn into that 12 ball and create that break shot yeah. and use a 14, but I don't think he can. He's thinking about doing something, that's for sure. He's trying to figure out how to get... That, one, is that, that one's no good, I guess, right? Well, I'm wondering if he's thinking of shooting the two ball. So and he's not. That and then using it to take out the one, you know. I don't think that would have been a bad shot. No, uh, he's going to play for those balls and get on the two. And then he, he can't, we won't get stuck because he's got the eight. Yeah, I like that. But see, he didn't get on the two. No. And maybe the 12 goes. He's going to bump the 13. Is it the 13 or the 9? The 9, yeah. Yeah, I think he realized after he shot it that he could have thought about it a little more. To set it up with the 14? Mm -hmm. well, to set it up with the, with the go, go down lower with the cue ball to shoot the 2 into the 1. I think that's why he's scratching his head. See, now he's thinking of leaving the cube there for the one, and then he really seems to favor that side of the table, obviously because he's right-handed, but sometimes sometimes it, if you overthink it, you can end up screwing up. Yes. There you go, Danny. You called for a uh, 
coffee. Thank you very much. May I see a menu, miss? Black and three sugars. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't put my dress on today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy your walk up, Danny. So I think that's what he's thinking of. He's thinking of uh, possibly taking out the 12 with the one ball. Taking out the 12 with the one. Oh, okay. I mean the nine ball is what I meant. I'm sorry. Oh. The nine ball with the one ball. Because in order for him to, to take out the 12, he has to have a fuller hit, which I think he does yeah. here. What I don't like about it is that the only shot he might have is 14. potential key ball. You yeah. know, but the eight ball is a good key ball, too. The, the, the nine ball will be a good key ball, mm -hmm. especially after he clears the seven, the three. three, and then mm -hmm. the nine. Yeah, I like that better. Yeah. That's definitely better. Well, the eight will be a good key ball. Let's see if he does it. Yeah. I, I'm not sure what he tried to do there. Hmm. Well, he's pretty much got to shoot this eight. I don't think he has the 14, does he? I can only assume that he he didn't get the angle that he wanted to, and but but I can only assume he really wanted to hit that a little harder than what he did to move the nine ball a little more. Oh, and get the, and shoot the 12. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or the 14. You know, people, but if he shot the 12, he can get go back up for the 3 and the 7, you know? Speaking of Steve Lipsky, I'm kind of pissed off that he didn't come down to this event. Because he was shooting good uh, several months ago. He was putting in a lot of time. And he was really hitting them good. Yeah. I, I, you know, I know his work's been driving him crazy now that he works from home. Yeah. But, you know... I think there's no excuse to take, you know, a five-day vacation to come play in this tournament. I know. You hear me, bro? I mean, he's good <laughs> enough to compete. I mean, Absolutely. Look Boy, at this he good roll. really worked hard. No, he played that. Yeah, but... But I'm just saying, you mean uh, getting the shot. You mean. That's a good roll. Yeah. <laughs> you can hit that ball and not wind up like this. But notice how extra hard he keeps working yeah. just to can't come up with a... And, and you know, it's like he's not seeing it all yeah. the, the, the opportunities there yet. Yeah. I mean, he's still learning the game, but to know that you don't know it that, that at that level, yeah. but still run the balls that you run, is mind-boggling. Yeah. Wow. It's a credit to his uh, his ability. Yeah, all, you yeah know? Uh, all these kids are talented. Mm-hmm. I say we kidnap Lipsky next time. We, hmm? we kidnap Lipsky yeah. next time. <laughs> so Gina, we're borrowing him for a week. We'll fly into Newark, yeah. me and you. We'll rent a car. There you go. Just I love make, that. Just make sure we don't wind up on first 48 <laughs> or something. You don't want them to steal your rims, right? It's bad right. enough I've been stealing <laughs> them for years. <laughs> Oh, well, nothing it's special such a, here. It's such mm -hmm. a great key ball, you know. Mm -hmm. you, just, you could shoot it from almost anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, you can get straight on one side or the other. And, and forward, it's just, backwards, yeah. sideways, yeah. up, down. You can go mm -hmm. underneath the slate, <laughs> through the cloth. It doesn't matter. It's just. Or you could get like leave that. Leave it in the rack. <laughs> See, this is a lip ski right here. This he'll, is, stop this it is, he'll stop it in the rack. If he can, yeah. yeah. This is. I'm not talking about Steve. Looks like he's going to go one rail straight up. Great shot. That's such yeah. a tough shot. Yeah. It's so easy to either bump the object ball or lose the angle. So Federer is currently on a run of 55 and now takes a lead by the score of 71 to 66. Is he run a 55? Mm-hmm. Okay. I would also like to offer congratulations to uh, Kelly Fisher and Pia Feller, who played in the final of the uh, women's division of the American 14.1. Yeah. And Kelly, congratulations on being inducted into the Hall of Fame. She's going to be inducted this Friday. Very nice. Along with Thorsten Holman.
I'd like to see uh, some of the women playing in the men's division next season. They really, they really could step up their game a lot, and they add something to the tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, they're strong players. Uh, Karen Core played in it. Jeanette played in it. Who I hope is doing better. Yeah. And uh, Jeanette started competing again, but then. Uh, <clears throat> She sent a message saying that she, the doctor says she's not supposed to be, not yet, and has to go on some meds. Oh, oh there's that scratch. See, that's that why, that that's why having that knowledge going into the rack is so important yeah. then, right? Now, I've seen Mizrak do that. Yeah. I saw Mizrak do that against Siegel after running 100 something balls. Yeah, that's the worst when you're like on a, a run of 100 or something. And, and I know yeah. Mizrak has seen it before. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I saw Miserac miss the ball literally right in front of the pocket. I'm talking yeah. about like like you say there's yeah. no way anyone against Jimmy Fusco when yeah. he won uh, the, his first and I think only World Straight Pool Championship, right? Jimmy? No, uh, 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 um, Miserac. Steve won it two years in oh, a row. So he won it two years in a row. So um, You won the World Junior Championship, didn't you? No, I did not. You came I, in I came in third or fourth. Third or fourth. Um, but when uh, Ms. Rack missed that ball, I asked him, I said, Steve, what, what happened there? He said, I broke my rule. My rule has always been, no matter what, you always make you make, you make always make sure you make the ball first, regardless of whether you get position or not. Of course. And yeah. I was thinking more about the cue ball, didn't look at the ball, and I missed it. Well, I'll tell you what, I never, I didn't know he said that, but I'm going to write that down, because that is the bottom line of this game. You've got to make what you're shooting yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. A lot of times people subconsciously steer the cue ball, and that usually means that they didn't make up their mind. Yeah. Or the shot is so easy, you take it for granted. Yep. Now, this is a Mickey Mouse rack here, but again, I'd like to get rid of that five ball. Just because it's blocking a five and a six, actually. I mean, honestly, I, w I would have liked to shoot the 12 ball after the eight ball. And just, okay, you know, okay. spread yeah, it a yeah. bit and then have the five. He had the opportunity to do that, but I guess he'd rather do it this way. But, you know, he's going to have the six regardless. Well, not even. The cue ball got away from him there. Yes, it did. But I'm wondering if the four is a break shot. It oh, looks yeah. like it's inside. Yeah. I can't no, no, tell. It's out. I'd say yeah. it's out. So he's taking the nine out of it. Okay. Nine, nine is good now. Wondering what was his goal there. <coughs> I mean, I like getting rid of the six, ten, one. Six, ten, one. Yes. Yeah, and then using the uh, the thirteen or the thirteen right now, and then the one, the ten, because wow. I like the fourteen, and then the eleven on the side, and then and the four in the four. corner. Oh, absolutely. For the for the break shot, but you know, he's he's way. thinking differently. Yeah. You know, every everyone has a preference. <coughs> you know. He's leaving a one to ten. It doesn't make sense. I, mean, I think he rushed through it. I mean, he could still use a fourteen four if he drew back. You know, if he would have drawn the ball back there for the uh, the ten and the one. But I guess he decided to just leave leave the long ball there. But I think I think it makes it a little trickier, to be honest with you. Oh, by the way, you can use the ten ball for the break. Yeah. 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 But he should have cleared. He should have incorporated everything. Made it. Made it connect. You think maybe he wanted to get a little straighter so he can come back down for the one, or you think he's gonna get rid of the two now that he's up there? Because you know, uh, I kind of, I kind of think he's looking to play the ten ball for the break. Mm. Oh, 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 that didn't react too good. Come he across, played a 15 and a 1. Ooh, he almost missed it. But he didn't because he hit it soft. Yeah. <laughs> if he had hit that hook. I mean, there's no way I would have left that for a no, key ball. No, absolutely not. Now he's got to do something heroic. Draw back and spin one rail. I like drawing back with no spin, so the cue ball would die after it hits a rail. 
you know, because it's a little, to see, just like that, it's a little trickier to control it once you have side spin. You know, but they're telling you, these kids, Boy, you these kids' cue balls are so good. It's yeah. like... side yeah unless the 12 you gotta look at the 12 here come off the floor into the mm -hmm. 312 what do you think you mean shoot the 12 now yeah uh, it yeah. all depends if it's dead off the three ball yeah well, but uh, I think you definitely got to shoot the 10 yeah. here regardless yeah, yeah. I'd be made it Engineer sneezing over there. Do you want me to call an ambulance? You okay? <laughs> I don't think they make them big enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds just like Al, doesn't he? He sounds just like his father. Thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> so would you use a 12 year to break him up then, or would you no. try to break up the six first? No, I, he's got that one three, too. Yes, no, he got to break up the six first. Yeah, of course. I saw Steve Lipsky. What's up, Steve? What's going on, bud? I'm glad to see that you're at least watching us make fun of you not being in this tournament. I I'm I gonna keep. We're gonna we're gonna keep harassing you until you play next next uh, year. That's right. I mean, next to Gene Belucas quitting pool, this is the biggest letdown in my career. <laughs> yeah. In my history in pool, Steve Lipsky not playing in this. We're rent we're renting a car next next uh, next year to go kidnap you to bring you here and obviously we're going to let the bosses know ahead of time and now steve and i played in the inaugural events that that uh they held in maryland when uh, peter burroughs was starting this mm. we used to drive down together and we played I several of that. these that's awesome great times yep you think the two goals past the four you yeah, think it has to I come down I, now i think it does I think he's going to attack it now. Yeah. I think he has to. He lost the angle. Oh, no. Nope. He's going to come across and play the six and then the two. Because I was wondering if it did go across, whether he want to shoot the six ball and then the two and then the four, but I guess not. Look at that. Hmm. He's going to use the two. Wow. Well, what the hell do we know? <laughs> See, he's playing. He's playing so fast. We don't even have time to consider the options. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Steve sees it a lot quicker than we do. Maybe that's why his name is Patterns. I think he's running 83 right now. Ooh, that's only the second rack, isn't it? Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's on on 28, right? Yeah, I never was good at geography. <laughs> Ooh. Wait a He's saying, I'm going to hit it harder to make sure I avoid a scratch and almost scratch again. Now, granted, I know the reasoning behind hitting the break shot hard, mm. but he's only got one shot. Yeah. One reasonable shot. So isn't that kind of argue against hitting it hard like that? Yeah. Uh, you should have something uh, a little easier than this if you're going to yeah. run all that risk. I mean, I, I, the only reason, there are two reasons why I hit the break shot hard. Number one, I got tired of getting stuck. Right. Uh, Gene Negi told me that he quit doing that when he was still alive because he got tired of getting stuck. So he's, he started practicing break shots eight hours a day. Just one break shot. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh, number two, 
I have a really good idea where my cue ball is going to go when I'm running into the rack. Oh, I agree. So, you know, I, I know when to hit it hard and when to hit it soft, you know. Nagy said this. I, I, I remember him saying it like 50 years ago, that he misses more break shots and he scratches more, but he runs more balls. Who said that? Nagy. Oh, Nagy. Gene yeah. Nagy. Because he was doing it when nobody did that. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, he told me he had so many 90... 100, 100 plus ball runs where it ended with no shot because he hit the break shot so soft that he yeah. got so frustrated. He said he never, he's never going to do it again. Yeah. <coughs> now, it's worked for Thorsten many times that I've also seen Thorsten scratch in the upper pockets. Yes. Or get, or get left hanging in the jaws of the pocket. But he mm -hmm. comes up with the shot. Yeah. I think the 12 goes past the 7. I think it does. If it does, that's a shot for sure. I guess it doesn't. Well. wonder if he's going to try to run into the now, but it wouldn't make sense to do that if the 15 goals, right? I don't know if the 15 goals, it is, I guess it doesn't because he's considering it. I have to be careful not to hit this like so full that the cue ball end up trying to roll down with the 15 and marry it, you know? Yeah. Well, he just created a situation where he can bump the 15. Mm -hmm. Now he has to come up with a shot and control it unless he decides to shoot the 13. He loves these long shots. So what pattern would you use here, Dan? Well, he's got to set up the uh, 15, but he's not going to be able to, he's no, he won't have a shot. See, I kind of like using the, the 9 to the 15 and then maybe to the 7. Oh, and using the 4 yeah, on the side and breaking with the 3? Or or use the 4 on the side and the 3 and breaking with the ball on the bottom rail too. That's the other option. But I, I prefer the 4 since I have the 4 there. Yeah. See, he likes the 9 ball better as a key ball. Well, probably not, because he's going to have to play the nine ball next, I guess. Let me I see. have no idea how he's going to get out of this mess. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What do you think? He's going to go for the four on the side? or No, four, in the, four is his break shot in the corner. He's just going to use the 12 to get to the nine. But like I say, he feels more comfortable with the four with the nine as a, as a key ball, you know. Came a little short on that one. Gonna have to really kill this one. Wow, how good, how good he hit that one! That's incredible. Look how good Not he good hit that enough. one. Oh yeah, he got yeah, the bounce oh yeah. off there. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, wow. I thought it was gonna die coming off the third rail. No, as soon as he hit, it, I knew the speed was perfect, man. It's like wow. So he's on the ball on the 42 ball run, and he's leading 108 to 72, and we are racing the 150 for the final. Oops! There you go. It's incredible, huh? You turn the cue ball loose. Yeah. yeah. Every miss so far has come from either hitting it too hard or losing the cue ball. And just when you think he's going to run out, yep. he misses. And then when, when, once you think Federer is going to run out, he makes a mistake. Yeah. You know, it's just don't think, don't think is it closing the door to my airplane and I'm banging on the cockpit trying to get yeah. in that I'm not going to be cursing these guys for missing and scratching and holding up my... I, did I tell you I have to catch a plane? Yeah, he told me. 
<laughs> I like shooting a stop shot here and shooting the two and and you know Oh I don't moving those uh, oh yeah for I sure. like to get rid of that. I don't want to shoot no short long shots at all ever. <laughs> well I like I like the twelve where it is for the eleven, so that's the only reason why I would leave it there. You know? Yeah, but you're young. I'm, I'm old. <laughs> I don't want to be shooting long shots. How many times have you ever shot a shot like this and you move the three into the seven, the seven takes a four out, but the three marries a seven and then creates <laughs> the cluster? How yeah. many times have we done like see that? Yeah. It's like a conga line. Yeah. He has to hope that the four is in the straight yeah. line of the side pocket. Now he's going to have to deal with that. He should be able to handle that. Mm -hmm. I think he might have enough room to shoot the 10 next if he wanted to, if he just shot a stop shot there just to get rid of that little room. What's that, which one? The, the 6 to the 10. I like that. That's a good idea. Yeah. Clear off the bottom balls. Take one section at the table at a time. But I'm wondering if he's thinking of that 5 ball too. You know, because the 5 does go on the side. Yeah, there's no, so. no window. No. And I'm, I can only assume the four is dead with the 15, right? Even if it isn't, later he can, if mm -hmm. he, when he clears those balls in the middle, they go in the corner. Yeah. Get on the 12 and pick them off. Yeah, I like your plane cleaning off the bottom. Yeah, you open up uh, more rails, yeah. <laughs> you know. And you pick up three points. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because uh, one time uh, Steve Lipsky got... <sighs> Yeah, he didn't hit that that great, but I think he's good. Steve Lipsky got annoyed at me in a in a joking way. Yeah. Because uh, I had this student, and and I and I told Steve the story. He said he didn't remember, but yeah, I remember. Um, so the student and I shot. Wow. This great student shot. came up to me and and asked me for a lesson because he had to play Steve <laughs> in the in the finals, I love the semifinals. It. I love it already. Yeah. So you know what I told him? What? I said, look, Steve is gonna is a multi, you know, ball runner. He's like he can run hundreds like it's going out of style. So this is what you want to do since he's giving you a handicap. Run as many balls as you can. Do not use worry about pattern play. But most importantly, the first balls that you pocket, if you're able to, are possible break shots. So he has none. Oh boy. <laughs> I think I remember him saying something, you know, these amateurs, before he found out that I gave him the lesson. <laughs> you know, it's tough playing amateurs because they take all the brick shots away from you because <laughs> you don't know the patterns. Yeah, I don't see him having any problems here at all. Nope. You can use a 4 or the 15 or the 4 and 15 and 12 to the 11 in the end. Mm -hmm. But if that's the case, I would like to get rid of whichever ball I'm not going to use as a break shot, whether it's the 11 or the 3. I think the 3 is better because it's, you know, you have more pocket space. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, what the hell was that? <laughs> I knew you were going to say something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was kind of bizarre, wasn't it? I mean, that's... They, they just shoot those balls with such confidence, man. It's unbelievable. But I think in, 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 the long, in the long run, they always hurt you. Yeah. Yeah, you got to play in right. In the long run. Yeah. In the long run, sure. sure. So what do you do here? Five in the side or play one of those in the same pocket? Five you called side. it, yeah. You called it. These guys are almost like the prototype of the modern player. They all seem to stroke the ball the same way. They they all hit the ball with the same kind of speed. Mm -hmm. 
there's not much difference in styles like there was between, say, Irving Crane and Joe Balsas. Or... It's like in the NFL, all the wide receivers look alike. They're all built the same. They all got to run a certain speed. Right. You know, and it's it's kind of like this with pool now. All these guys are, they're all six feet tall. They're all string beans. <laughs> right? Yeah. And they all hit the ball the same way. So he got a little bit of an angle here. He was trying to get straight on the four, so all he has to do is shoot stop, stop, stop. And yeah. you know, that, that, that's why it's straight pool. I try to tell people it's such a tough game. You're playing nine ball. This is perfect. You can end up in a general area, and you're good. But in straight yeah. pool, if you don't end up exactly where you need to, it's going to become tougher. Especially at the end. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is a tough shot, actually. You like a little slow roll on it or stunning it? Yeah, I like stunning this one a bit. Not me. Just a little bit. Because you don't really have to hit it that hard. No, because I'm old. <laughs> but actually, you know what? I, you know what? I, I'm going to tell you something. I, I kind of, I'm, I'm okay with rolling it. I feel comfortable rolling this ball. But I also like the fact that if you have an angle on the 12, you can just get a little closer. A little closer to the, uh, you might have to shoot this. He has to he shoot has to this. He has to go in the corner. In the corner. Yeah. Unless he does a lip ski and shoots the 11 and stops the cue on the rack. <laughs> Very nice speed control. Well, we've got a horse race here. Eighty six to one oh seven. But yet it says one oh eight here. Oh, they okay. take off the scratch. Gotcha. Sure, it's not like I go oh, take another timeout. I don't have a plane to catch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's at three in the morning. <laughs> at three in the morning I gotta get up. <laughs> Just the time to milk the chickens. It's only seven twelve, man. <laughs> You'll notice that the game isn't over. <laughs> All right, well, Tony just took off his headset. I guess I'll play my harmonica for you. For uh, Do you have any, uh, do you have any comments? I got the banjo. <laughs> do you have any Yes. Well, we're going to break.
stuck in the rack as soon as they hit. Uh, so now he's going to have to come up with a special shot. I, I, I like that five ball. I think he can handle yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think if he wanted to, he can even, well, I don't think the 12 ball goes inside. No, he can't. Shoot. If you're going to shoot anything, you got to shoot the five. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely the shot. It's a more direct hit. You don't have to be as, you know, guess the spot. Yeah. You can guess the spot a lot easier than you can in a thinner cut, <laughs> you know? Yes. Just got to make sure he doesn't foul the one or the cue wall because it is all ball fouls. And you got to make sure you hit it towards the long rail, not the short rail. Yeah. So in case, you, you know. Or slam dunk it like he did. Yeah. Well, it looks like he's going to break with the 14. Play to 15 too and then break with the 14. Mm hmm I wish he'd stop. I wish he'd stop. <laughs> I wish he'd do something I, I suggest just once. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it's like, you know, it's like, it's so easy because you don't have to, you're already there. Why yeah. not take it? But yeah, he's probably thinking, well, maybe I could use that as a break shot. I don't want to disturb it. You know, I don't know. You know, people can think differently sometimes, you know, but I would have done what you said. <laughs> In second, I mean, I would have done what I said. <laughs> oh. Well, you got that four for insurance from anywhere. Mm -hmm. But he still has to deal with the cluster. Yeah. Well, I think the 15, after you get rid of the 8, might go into the corner. But he can also use the 6 ball to break it up and use the 8 ball as some kind of insurance ball. But he would have to get down. Yeah, yeah, the six ball. I said the six ball, right? Yeah. Yeah. In my way of thinking, the one is the correct shot positionally, mm -hmm. but it's too difficult to shot. Not for them. Yeah. For anyone, really. Yeah. I, I think it's just too risky. But to, but to satisfy the requirements of the position, mm -hmm. I'd say one, four, drop it down to the rail and play to six. Right. No, I, I agree with that for sure. That's definitely the pattern there. It's just too difficult to, you know, get exactly what you need to with the one to be able to, yeah, to do what you want to do there. Coming around the table. I yep. guess so. Maybe yeah. For the, for the thirteen. It slid. Wow! Look at that. It wow. slid. It slid. It slid coming off the first rail. Yeah. The that's right. It changed the trajectory of the cloth. That's sure. right. I mean, for the the. the, the the ball for sure. Wow. Yeah. Maybe I can catch a car, a ride to Portland, Oregon from here <laughs> once I miss my plane. What another, what another big swing, huh? That was a very bad, ro that was a bad luck roll. I think he has enough angle to run into them. Yeah. I guess he didn't. <laughs> you played a 14 first. I, I put played a 14 first and then break. Yeah, well, so yeah. So make sure eight. he doesn't hit the side of the nine and again end up going on the opposite side, right? That's how you want to hit it. Yeah. Up oh, two problem yeah. balls. And well, you know, it's like I said earlier, Dan, and I'm pretty sure that we've already spoken about this. When you hit, when you run into some more cluster, it's not really necessary to hit him that hard. Yeah, and, that, and that's why I would have taken out the 14 first. Mm -hmm. So you would have had the 8, yeah. and you wouldn't have had the gun in hard. Yeah. yeah, and that's why the 15 wound up where it is. And the 3. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, the 15 is not a bad pre-key ball for the 12 if right. he didn't get rid of the break shot he had already. Yeah. So now he's going to have to, you know, do it the yeah. hard way, Yeah. right? If you consider it hard for him, because I guarantee you, he doesn't think it's hard. Well, I, w I might play the five here first. Absolutely. Why not? Yeah. You're already there. That's a Jim Gaultier. <laughs> That's what he does. Yeah. He said, if you were there already, well, the odds of you getting exactly there again, so you might as well shoot it. Big Steve once saw a shot like that. I was shooting or passing on. He said, if you can't make that shot, you shouldn't be playing pool. <laughs> 
See how he, he chose a different pattern where he has to move the ball a little more. See if he chooses a 12, then the 15, and the 5, you know, then okay. But you're still moving the cue ball yeah. way more than you should. And you if this ball straight on a rail, mm -hmm. it becomes harder to control the five. Mm -hmm. Well, that's perfect. No matter who wins this game, I got to give them both a lot of credit. You know, we've seen a lot of gaffes and scratches, but there's a lot of pressure here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure, yeah. And you know, just because they look like they're making it look easy doesn't mean they yeah. they don't feel the heat a bit, you know. You're in the final, you know. It's like, and you know, when I spoke to when, when I spoke to Josh uh, yesterday, he was telling me that the balls, this tape, the TV table, isn't breaking as easy as the other tables. Yeah. And we got spoiled last year by uh, Ruslan's performance with multiple hundred twenty fives an hour. And he almost, he, final he almost made it to the final again. Man. I know, I know. So let's see if he does with the cue ball here. Ah, that time he decided not to draw it. He stunned it. Yeah. Because he, he didn't because want it's a little gun shy. Yeah. He scratched several times. He scratched like two or three times off yes. the big shot, right? Yeah. I like shooting the two though and running into the six anyway because you're either going to have the six in the left pocket and the four in the right pocket. Not if you did that hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just carried on. It yeah. kept the momentum. Well, all you had to do was just tap it. Play the one here? Yeah, I, I love the one because it opens up the <coughs> pocket for the 11 once you get rid of that four, right? The four might go anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm saying that if you shoot the one ball and then shoot the four ball and then get on the 14 and use the 11 to break him up, Yeah. you know, that, that's a possibility right there. Ooh. Okay, so I guess he prefers the 14, and then the 6 is a guy call, right? I guess I think he's going to break it with them. What do yeah, you that's think? That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Use the 6 as a guy call. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a you guy call? Yeah. Insurance. I've never heard that before. <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, I've right. been using it all this time. <laughs> we that's okay. They, yeah. they, they weren't out back then. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I've been calling the insurance balls Geico's for years. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. What the f so I'm assuming he's going to use the 11 after the 4. Really? No, the 11 after the 4 to nudge, nudge those balls a bit. Okay. Right? That way yeah. he has a 10 6 as a Geico, yeah. right? <laughs> Not if he overhits it like that. Maybe he doesn't have to uh, run into them. Would you consider the 7 after the 11? And then... Nah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think so. I wouldn't... Yeah. I prefer not to shoot those little yeah. long shots if I don't have to, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, if you can get really good position and then bump the 8 over, mm -hmm. I, would, I would consider it. So he's going to get rid of the uh, three ball now to gain a better angle on the 10 right. to probably draw back. Well, he's not going to draw forward. back. He's going to go forward. Okay. Yeah. Nice shot. Mm-hmm. They could create an hit, hit the to the correct side. Just hit the 11. Mm -hmm. I think the 8 might be out of the rack. You see, this way we, need, we really need the black lines on the table so we can yeah. see if the balls are in yeah. the rack. Take a little 12 ball. Oh. See, he didn't want to do that. Drove it. Oh, break shot. Yeah. Yeah, but what I like about, like, what he was trying to do is if he hit the 13 the way he wanted to, he would have taken the 13, would have taken the, the 12 ball to the side pocket for a, a nice key ball, you know? Yeah. I don't like this. Ball. Yeah, but these are hangers. These are like 
Steve, I mean, I mean uh, and Steve Lipsky like shots. Now he has to do is get straight on the 13 and shoot in the corner and then the 12 in the side. Yeah, but the, the 7 was hanging there. It was a fat yeah. break shot. With, and you could have probably got with the balls where they were. Yeah. Could have left the cue ball in the rack. He but still see, has to perform here. He's just going to tap it. I don't know why. Right, his run is going to end here. Yep. Unless he's able to... Uh, yeah, I didn't understand that at all. I thought he should have gotten straight on the 13 and then just shoot a stop shot, shoot the 12 in the side. Here's a shot I like. Yeah. Well, I mean, he has a chance. He has a sh I'll tell you what the I'll tell you what his third shot's going to be from here. His third shot? His third what shot. What is it? Oh, depending on where the how, where he racks the balls? No. That's the 15 ball in the upper left corner. 15 ball in the upper left corner. Yeah, that's going to be his break shot. Yeah. He's going to play the 10 and then the 15. Nice. Or the 12. You catch that ball and the balls are racked tight. Those three balls come out all Always. the time. Yeah. You, you know, you can do the same thing from the behind the rack break shot. That's yeah. going to hit just the corner ball. Same yep. exact thing. Yep. Yeah. The biggest mistake people make here, though, sometimes if they shoot the 15 or the 12 and there's no balls in the way, he doesn't have that, that situation here. But where the one is, a lot of times if they shoot the other ball here, the cue ball goes towards the one and freezes on it. Mm -hmm. So you always have to make sure you hit it with enough speed so if you run into it, you yeah. keep the separation, right? I like that break shot, the proof, come to think of it, where, where he had the eight, you know, mm -hmm. the way it opened up. Yeah, where he, where he hit the corner ball perfectly. Yeah. That was a very good call, my friend. I got frustrated with slamming so many break shots <laughs> from the bottom and getting stuck or scratching. Yeah. Or so I said, maybe. They, and then one time I hit it and I caught the corner ball and the way it opened, I said, this is like. Yeah, the, the and after a little experiment, I noticed that it's coming out. I said, I might be onto something here. That's awesome. You risk nothing. Mm -hmm. If you miss the rack, you just play safe. It's risk free pool. I tried showing Alex Kazaki that same exact shot, yeah. right? But with the ball here, cue ball there, and the rack here. Yeah. And you hit it like this, and then this comes out here, that comes out there, that the, comes out there. The two balls in the apex so you, come out. Yeah. Right, so you, you play position for this ball on the side, and then use that to mm -hmm. play. And Alex Kazaki said, I would never hit it like that in a million years. I would hit it hard to go three rails. Of course, he's Greek. <laughs> He hits the ball and he yells "Opa" and he breaks a dish yeah. on the floor. I know. Yeah, he spends a lot of time in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's a good kid. Yeah. And by the way, stop telling these champions what shots to play during the tournament. Could you tell them after the tournament? The guys are running hundreds of balls and you're showing them how to play. Would you stop? Yes, sir. Okay. You ain't gonna stop. Well, if you ask me for help, I'd help you. I can't and I, help I, I, would, you. I would hope that you would help me if I asked you, you for can't, help. You can't help me. I'm too decrepit. <laughs> I'm too old. So he's less than 20 balls away from winning the championship. Yeah. He was playing the combination there. Played a 15 here. Yeah. Bail out. Mm -hmm. Unless he decides he wants a 15 as a break shot. I don't know. I think the three is good, no? Yeah, yeah. I like the three. Yeah. Especially since I'm right-handed. He's left-handed, you know? Yeah. Boy, this makes me want to play pool right now, you know? <laughs> really. Except I packed my pool cue on my luggage. Did I mention I have to take a plane later? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and wasn't sure if I mentioned it. I'm going to actually uh, hit some balls after this match to get ready. I think I've been practicing for the International Nine Ball, which starts tomorrow. I'm practicing for the International House of Pancakes. <laughs> I think I'm just going to eat <laughs> fattening food for the next You mean week. you don't like the Waffle House? <laughs> I love the Waffle House. The best oh waffles God. I ever had in my life. You never tried the waffles at the Waffle House? You know Steve Lipsky hates the Waffle House. We but do you, does he at least like the waffles? The waffles. I'm talking about the waffles. The waffles? Man, you're out of your mind. 
Steve, I love you, but you're out of your mind. We took me and Mike hijacked him. We made him go to a Waffle House in Maryland. It was horrible. He couldn't get tea. I mean, it, oh. was, it was... It was. But that doesn't mean they're all bad. Uh. Mm -mm. Uh -oh. oh, he was trying. I think wow. he was trying to nudge that sex. So you're going to use the nine ball as a key for the 15? I mean, you could use a six ball. Man. You sure could. You know, so. Six is a break shot and the 15 is a break shot. Considering that he needs five after this to win the event, mm -hmm. I would imagine he wants the 15 as a break shot because yeah. he probably gets, you know, more separate. You know, he feels more comfortable hitting with power from the side as opposed to behind the rack, right? Yeah. Very nice. I used to I do that as a trick shot. Yeah, I love that shot. I love a shot. Now all he needs is three. Yeah. I, 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 I was being facetious a little. I know the eight and the five would go in that direction. Mm -hmm. But I don't like shooting long shots, so. Well, you have to have an angle to take the 11 out of the way first. Yeah. Right? In order to be able well, to. Well, I thought you could go in from the three yeah. and one. Still has to get good on this. That's it. Very nice. Thanks for being here. Very nice. Well, there you have it, folks. The 2021 American 14.1 <laughs> champion, Mr. Joshua Filler, defeating Mr. Fedor Gorst by the score of 150. To 89. Yeah. I want to thank everyone involved in making this event possible, especially 